Yeah, so hello. Um, we are proceeding with the workshop and what you will learn now is basically transitioning from the lensless setup, which we built previously, um, to end up with a lens-based system. So what I have here is the Z-stage you assembled earlier with a finely corrected microscope objective lens. So that means when you place a sample roughly in the um, working distance, that's like uh, 10 millimeters roughly, it will create an image which is 160 millimeters far away. That's actually a German norm. Um, I don't know what's the number, but it'll just create an uh, image um, right here. And so we need to place the camera um, that's still inside the cube somewhere here. And we want to make it inverted so that we can observe something from the bottom, for example, from of your Petri dish. And we want to illuminate that with the previously assembled LD array. Uh, everything is controlled uh, with the ESP32 that we have here. And I'm just giving you a quick tour and show you how easy it is to uh, build it. We are using a folding mirror, so you may have this piece here. If it's dirty, <laughs> you could just wipe it with a piece of cotton. Um, it's just a, a cosmetic mirror, it's rather cheap, like 10 cents or something. Still good for what we want to do. So this is a bit tricky, um, so you just need to hold and close the cube. So I think it's best if you have the cube almost closed. And then you add the mirror, um, and then you just close it and then it's done. So then it looks like this here. We want to have a base plate of two times one. That's basically like that. And then we want to have the camera. So the camera is still mounted here. So the camera itself is mounted on a, um, nobody have seen it, but it's a, a C mount uh, mechanism. So it's a printed um, thread. And it can be that the camera is not quite straight, but that's not a problem at all. So you, uh, yeah, it could be that there's a tight little angle. That's just how it is now. Um, then you add the, the cube here. Also, it's relatively thin. Uh, that's just due to uh, the fact that the camera you use is quite thick. Um, so I hope it all fits into the cube. Otherwise, you have to revise a bit. And then um, this layer is, in a way, already done. So you can tune the, the distance between the objective lens and the camera by sliding this back and forth. Um, now we add the second layer. Uh, it's always good practice to have the same, uh, yeah orientation of the base plates. So we just add a second layer. What we want to do now is, uh, so this has already become very solid, um, we want to add the lens here. So this one you assembled previously, then you just stack that here, but we also want to have a support layer for the cube here. So what I'm going to do now is basically sneaking in one cube here, um, and then you just mount the two simultaneously um, on the plate here. I think I'm running into a little issue with the here. Oh. Sorry for that. I think this one here uh, is just pushing here against the insert. In your case, this should not be the case, I hope. I'm just moving that a little bit back. So I could also just move the, the whole thing a little bit further away to meet the actual 160 millimeters. So we will have that now. So this is already a microscope and we are going to proceed now. So now you have from here is a 50, well, this is 100, and this is roughly, well, not quite 160, but roughly. So this is now our microscope. Um, it forms an image on the camera, and the Z-stage moves the objective lens up and down. So what we are um, ending up with, or what's missing, finally, is uh, a sample mount. So we just need to add one more base plate, and then a cube where we can add the sample mount. In this case, now it's gray. In your case, you can just recycle what you have here. And then you just sneak this in here. You add a sample. In this case, it's again the blood smear uh, with the cover slip pointing downwards, since these objective lenses are corrected for the thickness of the cover slip. Okay, and then just close it, and then everything should be hopefully rather tight. And then we are just end up uh, ending up with. Um, so just make sure that the cube is closed everywhere. You can also make. Um, very tight by just pressing it. So this is now almost done. So you have the sample, the objective lens, and the camera. And now we just need to add the, um, the LD array that is also going on top here. So make sure that uh, the holes here fit in the injection molded cube holes here. So that's already it. So we have three wires, um, which are now not connected to this uh, device, but we can do that. So you have uh, digital in, five volts, and ground. I also marked it here. Um, and so we start with the, the data that's going on the holes pin here. So we just uh, add that here. We have the uh, ground. This goes to ground. And the 5 volts obviously goes to uh, 5 volts. And then you also have the wire for 
your motor and this we just plug in let's say right here and then you need to have the USB cable and also the power cable which I will bring in a second and then you can place this here for example on top and then we are all set So we're continuing with the setup of the microscope and we are doing that in the process so that you know how the, the JSON file is actually being constructed. So what we have again is the light vision camera, the ESP32 board, and we also want to control the LED matrix. So I'm just heading over to one that's already almost what we want to have. So we are mixing two different versions together. So this is having um, the ESP32 manager that's um, for the stage, the stage manager, the, the general manager just encapsulates the whole serial, uh, which is the board, because the board is connected to the stage and also to the LED matrix, so we have to have a wrapper. Uh, we just pretend that it's uh, connected on this port. In best case, it's identifying the port by itself. Uh, we have the matrix that's connecting every LED to uh, a button here, so we also have to have a widget later. The wide field camera is a different one, so we want to have the the one from the previous example, which is the Vimba one. Uh, so we just copy paste the, the detector settings, which is the, uh, the AV cam and the AV manager. So we are using, instead of this here, use that. And the settings also have a different name tag. So we just use that. And then we are almost set. Let's just look whether we have all the different widgets we wanna have. So we have the LED matrix, the positioner, the image, etc. So this is all set, we just save it under a new name, saying uh, example, UC2 incubator, uh, matrix, Vimba, .json, we just copy paste, uh, copy the name and paste it into the in-control options. And just say now, okay, this is the one we want to use. So those are just old names I just keep for the record. So this is now the setup file name we are going to use for this dedicated setup. And then I'm just starting it again by saying, okay, main, start. So this is the GUI. Um, unfortunately, the the ratio may be not very nice because the whole LED matrix occupies the whole uh, screen. This is just a Windows problem for now, but we'll work on that. So anyway, so what... Okay, so I will now present you how the system works with ImSwitch. So we have the setup here. And we do have the LED matrix representation of the array right here. And so whenever I click an LED, let's say for example, number 28, the LED will turn on and off. And so you can set up arbitrarily um, or arbitrary patterns, um, for example, in order to maximize the contrast or uh, just increase intensity. So there's also a slider that will give you more or less intensity to, for example, don't bother the sample too much. And, and then just set one single for coherent illumination. And then we are going to focus. So that is here with the positioner. And then you can just hit the up and down button so that you, well, we don't want to go 100 or 1,000 steps. Let's just start with a small value and maybe smaller value for the speed. And then, we can... okay, last little improvement I must admit. So there has to be a rubber band so that its force on the Z stage is always pointing upwards. Um, so now you should be able to get much better results. So let's try it again. So it's going up and down. We're almost there, uh, just maybe a few more steps. Yeah, there we go. So nice little red blood cells. I am astonished. <laughs> Let's just try to eventually do some minor steps. Well, out of focus. Yeah, I think we were not too bad. Anymore. Too far off. Yeah, that's a good result for now. Thank you very much.